tiny little sports cars. They're just great, aren't they? There's the Alpine A110 that can be had at just a fraction over a ton and feels fantastic to drive. Or the MX-5, which has seats that only go back far enough to just let me sit in. Or even something like an old MGB. It's the best fun for its buck, right? What if there was a car that made those others seem a bit lardy? What if there was a car that laughed at the idea of a ton and positively chortled at the thought of a big engine? What would such a car be called? Well, it would be a Caterham 170. Caterham makes some lightweight, nimble cars, but this one completely blows all the others away. The lightest car it has ever made, the 170, tips the scales at just 440 kilograms, which, to put it into perspective, means a grand piano weighs more. But that's not all. This is the narrowest car that Caterham makes. It's just 1,470 millimeters across, which is less than the height of the average 12-year-old. Under the bonnet, there is an engine, or at least there's part of one. It's a 660cc Suzuki three-cylinder, which means it's about the same size as two cans of your favorite fizzy drink, or 11% of the engine in a Bentley Flying Spur. It produces 84 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 116 Newton meters of torque at 4,500. I'm pretty sure there are supercars that have a starter motor that produces more than that. So, what's the point? Oh, me of little faith, how wrong you are. This car is perfectly built to be fit for its purpose. You see, it is a K car. It is built for Japan's K regulations, which mean that teeny tiny little cars with engines under 660 cc's can be sold and driven with very little tax or insurance. And that has created some excellent cars, and this is one of them. But what does that matter? Surely such little horsepower isn't good for anyone anywhere. Well, that's where its power to weight ratio matters, because this car weighing just 450 kilograms means that it has a power to weight ratio of 180 horsepower per tonne. To put that into perspective, the latest Golf GTI has a power to weight ratio of 167 horsepower per tonne, and the brilliantly light Up GTI struggles to get to just 107. But that's not all that's small. Take the tyres, which are 155 profile on the front or a whopping 165 profile at the rear. And the tininess doesn't end there. Take the alloys, which are 14 inches. There's the CO2 emissions, which are less than that on a Yaris hybrid. And then there's the tech on this car, which, well, it isn't. There are two versions of the 170, S or R. Unsurprisingly, the R is more focused on performance and the S on livability. Although that is in Caterham terms. This S therefore gets a windscreen and a roof and some more road compliant suspension. Now you might think there must be some fancy carbon trickery going on here from Caterham in order to make it so lightweight. And since it is the lightest car that Caterham has ever made, you'd probably be justified in thinking that, but you'd be wrong. It's just tiny. Caterham has gone completely back to basics to make sure this thing is as light as possible. There's drum brakes on the back. It's even riding on leaf springs. And then just look at this place. Look in here. I've got a heated windscreen, I've got a fan which is not heated, and that's it. That's all the mod cons. Unless you count a steering wheel and some headlights as fancy, then that's it. This is as stripped back as you can get without going for the arm. All right, so it's sparse inside as well. But what's it like to drive? Surely a complete lack of power will deem it a bit lacklustre. Ah, don't be daft. This thing's an absolute riot. It might be a bold statement to make, but this could be one of the last truly great combustion engine cars as we move into the future of motoring. It is fantastic. And it just helps to prove what you don't need is more power and more weight. The complete lack of mass totally negates the teeniness of the engine. Okay, it doesn't accelerate with anything like the ferocity of any of its larger engine siblings, and 
you really do have to work the gears to try and get it anywhere and there's almost nothing under three and a half thousand rpm but who cares get in its rev range and that three pot sings and actually where this thing is truly fantastic is in the corners a reminder this thing has no power steering it has no servo on the brakes and no assistance there at all and it has no traction control other than your right foot it is so back to basics they're down to a five speed gearbox and a little toggle for the indicator but it's all the better for it there is a sense of incredible feeling that just fizzes through this wonderful little detachable momo steering wheel that little three-pot engine just thrums away with happiness and yes you gotta rev it and you have to work the gearbox to really get anything but when it goes it just feels so happy and every time you come off the throttle and change gear there's a whoosh that would rival any tuned in pretzer out there from its little turbocharger and then there's the brakes which without the servo assistance if you want to call up all of this car's stopping power you do have to hit with some force but when you do hit them god they give you incredible feedback the brake feel from that pedal is unlike almost anything else on the road it is a true joy to drive string all those things together and you've got something pretty special the kind of automotive experience you just don't get in many places these days just listen to that oh, it's all worthwhile when you get to a corner and you pitch it in at speeds that larger sports cars would just leave you wincing but there are downsides to this car it is truly tiny i cannot explain to you quite how small this is i have to drive this quite a lot without my shoes on because if i have my shoes on i'll hit all three pedals at once never mind two of them but that means it's perfect for heel and toe actually sod heel and toe it's big toe little toe then there's the fact that the roof is of course quite perfunctory and got caught in a rainstorm yesterday and a lot of water did start to come in and the engine warning light came on for no apparent reason it's gone now i'll never really know why it was there then there's the fact that that engine is extremely rev happy so you do have to rev it a lot if you want to overtake something at 70 you're probably not changing down otherwise you're going to hear seven and a half thousand revs but it is a little motorbike style engine so that is kind of to be expected and it does absolutely hate fifth gear it makes a weird rattling noise if it sits there for too long in fifth and just doesn't really seem to like it but it's all absolutely paid off by the feeling when you find the right road in this absolutely the right car when you pitch it into a corner if you have the throttle on there is a teeny bit of understeer but you lift off and that will be completely corrected you can then use what little power there is to just gently play with the back end and that steering is so good so delightfully communicative that it feels almost telepathic to just correct anything that goes wrong it feels like there is far more contact patch than these tires are actually giving you even though there is basically none I'm sure there are motorbikes out there that have more tyre contact than this and you shouldn't care at all. The brakes, yes they're excellent, but any unloaded tyre will lock with absolute ease because there's nothing to keep it spinning because there's barely any contact match. And that's great because this is actually driving and I bloody love it. The truth is that such a tiny thing just can't be for everyone. Even compared to its normal brothers, the 170 is lacking in space, and at £22,000, you could think about getting a Fiesta ST. But the thing is, nothing around will give you the same feeling. And in Japan, where K cars are massive, it will sell. As sports cars get heavier and heavier, Caterham digs in, sticks to its roots, and refuses to go anywhere. You know what? We should be very grateful for that 